I want my intervention in nature to be as small as possible. That means I go to the water, and as a river engineer, I invite it to stay with me and do something for me, instead of the other way around, where I do something with the water. The normal concept for regulating streams consists of forcing them into a corset of concrete. But when the water is high, that method often does not work. But if one gives the stream a chance to move in the shape of a spiral, it will remain on its normal course. We've used river engineering methods to show that the current thread can be directed from the outside to the inside, and even into the stream bed. That means that the energy flows into the stream bed, flowing downward without causing damage. This has a highly positive effect, especially when the water is high, because the banks are not affected by the stream thread. Thus the water flows downward without damaging either bank. Success has proved Ottmar Grober right. He's drawing on the findings of the legendary natural scientist and forester Victor Schauberger, who in the period between the wars pointed out that one must study water courses in order to deal with the problems caused by severe flooding. If we river engineers can successfully find a way of keeping the water in the landscape, we can save ourselves a lot of trouble and a lot of money as well. And at the same time, we can return to a kind of landscape that gives us back the thing we can and must call our highest good, our health. To what extent is water capable of picking up information? What does it perceive? And how does it remember it over time? We have then Versuche unternommen. Then we undertook experiments to find out whether things changed when we put something into the water. You can do that, for example, with stones or with metal, or even with living things, such as twigs or flowers. Here you see a petal from a flower, a real flower. It was placed in the water. A while later we took a drop of water and we put it on a slide and took a photograph of it after it had dried. And here you can see one of the pictures. And you can see it in this picture. It's the typical image you get when you put a flower into water. You could recognize the flower in every single drop in this glass, of course. That can be reproduced and has significance. And if you were to put a different flower in here, for example, a sweet William flower, then all the drops of this water would look like sweet William. The Israeli scientist Eshel Ben Jacob uses completely different methods to arrive at the same conclusion. The odor of these plants that we have here can have a very, very strong effect. Not only if I put some leaf into the water, but just the odor which is deposited around has a very, very strong effect on the water. Uh, and this strong effect causes all the time inside to gather from the atmosphere, to be mixed in, to form a big network, very complicated network of bubbles, very, very tiny bubbles of gases. And the number of nanobubbles inside here, just to give you an estimate, it's about, uh, depends on the condition, it's about a thousand times the number of neurons that we have in our brain. Science and play instinct are often closely connected. As a scientist, you have to ask yourself, of course, whether there isn't a logical extension of this. What about plants? And so we tried an experiment that we'd like to call lettuce listening to a mobile phone. 
Here's what we do. We take so-called reference water, that is, water from the institute here, tap water, and you can see that here in the middle, it has a dark spot that you can see in the image. Well, it has that in every drop. So now we take the water, which we have in a big pot, and we simply throw in the lettuce, a real head of lettuce. And then we take pictures of it and we can see, aha, that's lettuce. Now the water knows, and you can see it, that there is a head of lettuce in there. Interestingly enough, the dark center has disappeared. This is something we very often see when we put something living into the water. It produces a bright center. The living thing apparently has a way of forming a center. So now we take a second head of lettuce and we let the second head listen to the mobile phone. That means we simply turn on the phone and hold it next to the lettuce for two minutes. And we assume that the lettuce has absorbed radiation from the phone. Now we take this head of lettuce and put it into the reference water as well and we compare the two results. And you can clearly see from the results that the edge is completely different. The middle is somewhat different, so you can see that the lettuce was radiated by the phone and picked up the radiation. It has imparted that information to the reference water, and if we now take pictures of drops from the reference water where we put the lettuce, we can see from the water that this head of lettuce heard the mobile phone. That's apparently the way nature works. So funktioniert anscheinend die Natur. Water has a memory. And water has a kind of intelligence, much more than air, you know. Water is... it's a cosmic thing. Johann Grande, the waterman of Tyrol, believes that it is possible to transfer information from one sample of water to another, without the two of them coming into contact with each other. The process developed by him, so-called water revitalization, is based on the principle of conducting flowing water through a stainless steel container that is filled with revitalized water. The flowing water picks up the information from the still water. But Grande's success has its opponents, who call water revitalization parascientific nonsense. In fact, the process cannot be understood by using conventional scientific means. Nevertheless, more than 300,000 users worldwide rely on his system, from simple households to high-tech industries. Industrial users are not bothered by the critics. They rely on their own experience and results. Conventional water is aggressive and practically eats the pipes from the inside out, which leads to pipes bursting. At the Leedsen Mechanical Engineering plant in Austria, there seemed to be no solution to the problem. We had very serious problems with corrosion, and that was reflected in many instances of broken pipes. We now have the situation better under control. At first I really couldn't get my mind around it, you know, because when you look at the container you really can't imagine what good it could do. But based on the fact that we now have fewer instances of broken pipes and all, I'm convinced that it really does help. Yeah. We monitored the water, and before we installed Grander, the iron content in the heating water was 26 milligrams per liter. Two months later, the iron had come down to only 0.7 milligrams per liter, which was, of course, excellent for the corrosion. The corrosion stopped. Does water revitalization make the water less aggressive? Positive results have been seen not only in the case of rust, but also with the accumulation of sludge. No one is sure why, but they are certainly pleased with the results. And in particular, we can say that the situation with sludge has noticeably improved. We also have records and measurements to prove it. They know the results, but not the reason. But isn't that good enough? FarmTech is a German company near Karlsruhe that produces plastic parts of all kinds. 
To maintain high material quality, the plant needs a good cooling system.